Yo, what's up YouTube? We are back in the garage with my VBWX and we are going to be working on the rear brakes. STI brake kit, six pistons. If you missed last week's video, we've already installed the fronts. They've been awesome. I've had them on the car for the last four days and now we're moving on to the rear. So we're going to get the stock calipers, rotors, everything removed, stock brake lines. We're going to install some, rotor some rotor uh, stainless brake lines. We're going to be upgrading to the STI setup. So I've already installed the passenger side and I wanted to give you guys a good comparison of how the rotor brake line fits. It fits just like stock without connects and comes all the way up here. And this is compared to the factory brake line. It fits exactly just as good. It's not going to have that spongy flex. Here's the driver's side one. I'll throw a little b-roll up for you guys to enjoy of the front drivers or for the front STI brake install that we did last week so you guys can get a little bit of that. Six piston calipers these are from a 2018 plus STI and then I'm running the Paragon Performance two-piece rotors which are a direct bolt-on you don't need longer wheel studs you don't need a rotor adapter it's just a direct bolt-on plug-and-play fits just like stock it's awesome and it doesn't screw with your wheel fitment or wheel offset everything just mounts right up what i was confused with with these is i couldn't get any information if the um if you needed you know different aftermarket brake lines that were longer if they were different with the brembos and the answer is no this is just the factory uh replacement so these will work with the oem brakes or with the brembo brakes either one there's nothing different it's a direct bolt-on so you guys can either use the stock ones or you can just upgrade to any aftermarket stainless steel lines these work just fine i'll put a link to the uh, subi mods, mods website where you can just order these directly and they're uh, less than 200 bucks for the whole set so not a bad deal But the STI rotor is a direct fit. So this side took me about an hour. Let's go ahead and move over to the driver's side and let's get the install done. I'll show you guys every step that's involved. If you're curious about upgrading to Brembo's, what you gotta do, how to do it. Uh, simple and easy guys, so let's get into it. Okay, now that that's kind of soaked in, I'm going to make sure that the e-brake is decompressed all the way. Just tap this rotor off real quick. Okay, now that we've got our STI caliper and rotor ready over there, let's go ahead and just take this caliper and rotor off. The first thing we're going to do is you need to drain all the brake fluid from the system. Let's just put that on there. Lefty Lucy. Then we'll go to the car and we'll pump it, pump all the fluid out. So you know all the fluid is out of the car when your master cylinder is completely drained and there's no more fluid in it. So we're going to get the stock brake line off. And to do that, I'm going to blast out all this dirt and stuff. I don't want any of it getting back into the lines. Alright guys, use your flare nut wrench again. We're just going to go ahead and tap this off. Lefty Lucy, put a hammer on it. Give a little bit of a pop. It only takes like eight to 10 pounds of pressure. Little fastener clip out. You can move the top and bottom so those threads are nice and loose. Go ahead and take the caliper up, guys. Make sure your e-brakes off as well. If the e-brakes on in the car, those e-brake pads are going to be extended out into the center of this rotor, and it's not going to come out. Oh. 
So once we get done with this install, the next video I've got the fog lights here and everything you need for a direct plug and play. Those are going to be installed right here. And we installed the sport grill with the Noble LED daytime running light bezels. All right, so looking at the stock one, you're just over 11 inches wide, like 11 and a third probably. And this one is 12 and three quarters. So it's like an inch and a half bigger. Dust shield is too small. And what I did on the other side is just use a flathead. And you basically have all these little welds kind of around. And if you use a flathead and just kind of pry it down and hit it with a hammer. This is pretty much all loose, guys. So you can see um, this kind of has to break off at the end. And then from there, it'll just pull away. There we go. So the one thing you want to be careful for is the e-brake line. Make sure you're not damaging that when you're hitting down here. But everything is nice and free. Now we can slip the rotor on. And then looking behind here, guys, these are basically all the little contact points here where the little spot welds are on. So, I mean, you could spend the time to drill those out, but there's just a bunch of little contact points kind of all the way around here. And then the other thing you guys can do if you want, this only took like about two minutes to pound these things off. You can take a grinder or like a cutting wheel and you can cut basically along this whole edge and cut that all away. To me, I don't want to get, you know, all that metal dust and everything all over my garage and I can just pound that off. And I'd rather have the full exposed air to the back so you get better cooling capabilities anyway. So let's go ahead and throw this thing on. <laughs> Alright, rotor up and on. So we're getting ready to mount the STI caliper and these are, you know, Brembo. They're made in Italy. The mounting hardware is actually different. So this is the hardware from the front or from the factory rear caliper that fastens in it to the car. This is the Brembo. So you can see the thread pitch is different. Make sure you use the Brembo um, hardware because if you put the uh, super hardware and you're going to strip your aluminum caliper uh, threading and that's going to really screw you over. Plenty of pad left in the brake calipers. I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze squeeze them to squeeze the juice out for easy fitment and then that lets me know that the pistons and everything are working properly. You only need about eight to 10 foot pounds of pressure to lock these in. I'm gonna spray everything down with just a little bit of uh, brake parts cleaner just to make sure anything that was on there is clean. factory spec. Don't over tighten them guys, you're going into aluminum. Just remember that. So make sure you put a copper crush washer on either side. And I like the copper because it won't corrode and it'll hold up longer over time. And just be careful with the banjo bolt guys. Just keep in mind you're going into aluminum. And snug this down guys, you don't need a lot of pressure. It's like 12 to 14 foot pounds. I'm just gonna do it by feel. There we go. All right, well everything is together guys. Lines are in, everything's connected, just like factory. And all the fastening points are on there. Both crop, copper crush washers are on. So what we're gonna do is fill the brake reservoir up with brake fluid and then we are going to bleed everything. Went ahead and bought some uh, Motul 
RBF or racing brake fluid. This is the uh, race RBF 600. It's a dot four, which will work in the WRX. Let's go ahead and put some brake fluid in, guys. Be extremely careful not to spill any of this. You may want to use a funnel because it'll eat away at your paint. What I wanted to show you guys in today's video, if you were considering doing the STI brakes, is will they mount up? Is there any brackets or anything you have to do? No, it's just direct bolt on. So you can just take the STI rotor, put it right on. The caliper mounts right up to the knuckle and you're good to go. Brake line goes in and we are set. Easiest way to loosen your bleeder valve is just put a 11 mil wrench on it to crack it loose. Okay, Maddie, go ahead. Go ahead and pump. And there we go, it is slowly leaking. So that's how I bleed. It basically allows the air to come out. It creates a fluid area here so no, no more bubbles are getting in. And now we can just tighten this down and move along. So when you guys bleed, you've got two bleeder valves. You got one on this side, and then there's another one, just like the big front brakes that you have to do on the back side as well. So make sure you bleed both, otherwise, your brake system is not going to work. Okay, now that everything is bled, before I put the wheels on, I want to test the brake pedal for feel. And it is nice and firm. I'm going to have my daughter come out and press on the pedal. I'm going to check all the brake line connections and all the fittings to make sure everything is uh, not leaking. washing off all the calipers after I sprayed brake clean off just to make sure that there's no remaining brake fluid that's gonna eat away at the paint. We'll put the car back together tonight, go take it for like just a really quick drive around the neighborhood and then we'll do a full test drive I think later on that way we can review the we can review the front and rear brakes, kind of the whole package. I'll do a full driving video. I can probably spend 10 minutes just talking about the brakes and doing a bunch of cool shots for you guys. All right, guys, we are all done. I've got all the wheels back on. Everything is lightly torqued. I got to put it on the ground and everything is bled. I only use like one and a half quarts of the brake fluid. So you at least need two to get the full job done. Uh, that's what I did the first time when I installed the front, but I just bought a four pack. That's probably a better deal. It's a four pack for like 60 bucks, probably best way to go. Let's get this thing on the ground and I gotta get to bed.
on the brakes feel really smooth they feel really composed they work very effectively um, they're not like real touchy so when you step on it's smooth and then the harder you push the harder it, it stops and it's super easy uh, to make the car stop feel so much more confident at speed and I'm very happy that I made this decision let's do a full stop test real quick and then I'm going to bed pretty crazy if you guys could see my face there I'm filming in nighttime and it's like pitch black in my car and they're super quiet and they don't make any noise like the Carbotech did which I really like this thing can stop. And the car is back home in the driveway after the first quick little drive and these brakes work awesome. Super happy with them. Um, rear, the rear looks so much better the way they feel the wheel well. I right hear Subaru. Boxer rumble. I'm so glad I did this guys. My car is, is pretty much getting there. I've got the iBox suspension, the Brembo, six piston calipers we've got parent front mount intercooler, parent turbo inlet intake, Protune. The car's making 373 horse, or no, three, 373 torque to the wheels, 323 horse to the wheels. So it's pretty well balanced. Last thing I'd like to do is get myself some type of body kit. I just am not really too fond of anything that's out. I wanna maybe paint like some of the plastic body cladding, get like some carbon fiber, Maybe like side skirt extensions, rear, rear diffuser, and like a front uh, lip or front splitter. That's kind of what my thoughts are. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think down below. I wanted to throw this in for you guys. The e-brake operation is exactly the same as it is with the stock brakes. I didn't have to do any adjustment or anything like that. I've had the brakes on the car for the last week, and I've just been unmotivated to edit this video because I've been tired. I've been burnt out. But the brakes are awesome, guys, and worth every dollar. I would highly recommend doing this for your car. It transforms the platform. It makes the car so much more fun, especially having, you know, close to 400 uh, torque at the wheels. And this car is pretty fast at speed with the stock brakes. It would give you that oh shit feeling that you can't stop and kind of scare the piss out of you. And now with, you know, going to the track and I'm going to be doing, you know, braking from 120, 130 miles an hour. I am confident that you know this car can stop. If you guys want to see a full brake test video, give me 200 likes on this video and I will go out and make you guys a 10 minute driving video with a bunch of different stopping data, stopping tests, and just like a cool cinematic video. 200 likes guys, let's do it. The biggest challenge for me doing this brake install is there's really no information online about it. There wasn't uh, any real good YouTube videos for installation. Um, everybody I talked to basically uh, didn't have any answers for me so i kind of fumbled my way through it hopefully the video turned out good for you guys and you guys can get your cars set up equally as good i hope that i gave you guys the information you were looking for about the sti brakes with the car and i hope that it gave you the confidence to do the install yourself as well as i will have a list for all the uh, parts i installed for the brakes for the rotors for the brake lines as well as the tools i use they'll all be linked in the description box down below for you guys if you want to do the same thing to your car. Well, for you guys that made it to the end, leave me a hashtag to the end. I know these videos can be kind of long. It can be kind of boring doing all the install stuff. I've got all the stuff I need to sell. So I'm gonna sell the stock STI front rotors. I'm gonna sell the dust shields. I'm gonna sell all my brakes, OEM stuff. I've got the STI rear knuckles and uh, yeah, rear dust shield. So I'm gonna sell all that stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can recoup some of the money this brake kit, if you guys are going to do it, it's going to cost you around four grand. Even for a U set, that's going to be the uh, front rotors from Paragon Performance, the uh, STI six piston brake kit, and then the brake lines, brake fluid, a little bit of you know miscellaneous stuff that you'll need to do it. It's going to cost you about four grand. You can do the uh, step down brake kit for probably twenty five hundred for the four piston setup if you want to go that route as well. Um, I'm going to be taking my car to a car show this Saturday. It's going to be the vendor booth with Stateside Garage. Hopefully I see some of you guys there. Well, that's going to wrap it up, guys, for today's video. I'm going to sit in my office, put this content on my computer, and I'm going to answer all your guys' questions we did on the uh, Paragon Brake STI 
front rotor video we did. So if you missed the front brakes, that's episode one. This is gonna be episode two. I'm gonna go through and answer all your guys' questions that you've got on the uh, YouTube video. So thank you so much for you guys that watch the videos and comment and uh, part of the channel. And you know, it's just, uh, it's exciting. I, I do this because I'm passionate about cars and I like sharing them, uh, sharing the type of stuff that I do with the WRX community, the Skyline community, just the automotive community. And I appreciate you guys watching the videos. With your help, it helps, you know, the views help pay for the parts and uh, the channel doesn't earn money. It's it's not a lot, but it's enough to uh, save up and buy a, you know, brake kit every three, four months uh, with the YouTube revenue. So um, I'm going to head to bed. It's uh, 10, 15. I got to get up and be to work in, I got to be at work in eight hours from now. So I need a shower and do my stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. I hope you guys like this video. Leave me some comments. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't and share the video so we can grow. Thanks, guys. Bye.